Hi everyone, welcome to this Unity 3D tutorial in which we're gonna take a look at how to create um, windows like these. So this is gonna be a continuation of um, of a previous uh, tutorial. This is gonna be part five. If you haven't looked at the previous one, I highly encourage you to go and have a look at it. A uh, link for that will be in the description. Also, we're gonna be using the scripts that we did on that tutorial so if you don't have them not to worry as well there's going to be a link uh, in the description to the source code for the starting project files okay let's get started let's delete the first person controller that you have in the in the project right here because the reason being um, i created the previous episode uh, using unity for like the part four of the video series i used unity 4 and for the part five this one i'm using unity 5 and there's a new um first person character controller that's available so let's use that that'd be useful when like going forward okay so i deleted the character controller and go to assets input packages input package and then select characters and just gonna import everything if, in, if you want, you can keep the existing um, character controller that you have. Uh, if, it, if you created it using it before, then that's fine. You can keep on using it. I'm just gonna import the new one just to show you how to do it. Okay, so once it's imported in standard assets, characters, first person controller, there's a prefabs folder and in there there's FPS controller. Just drag that, um, drag that to the, into the scene. Um, select the FPS controller and then move it a bit back. Let's see the height of it. Oh, that's quite small compared to the floor. It's quite, yeah. So let's try um, something around nine, maybe just a bit. Yeah, around nine uh, for the height and for the radius. Um, let's go with one, not 11, one. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Um, and also, if you scroll down and open up mouse look in the first person controller script, this lock cursor ticked on, you have to tick, tick it off, uh, make it false. Um, and then if you press maximize on play, because if you don't uh, maximize on play and run it, I'll show you what happens, but let's test this one first. So, okay, this, okay. All the drawers and everything is working, okay. So if, I, if you don't press maximize on play for this uh, character controller, the mouse, because uh, uh, since it's using the whole screen width uh, and height, it's not gonna go the whole way, as in like we can't click sort of there. You can click here and wherever we can click, it works, so it's fine. Um, yeah, I'll just use maximize on play. Right, cool. So that's done. Now let's create the windows. Setting up the object hierarchy for the window is going to be a bit uh, confusing. So before straight away jumping into Unity and then assigning the game objects and stuff like that, let's go through it uh, as a small overview. So we're going to have a root uh, game object, which we're going to call window. And inside there, inside that game object, we're going to have another um, two game objects and inside one of those we're going to have the um, the actual panel itself. The last one is going to be the mesh renderer. So this is the one that you're going to actually see as a uh, as a panel, window panel. But uh, we need the other ones to have the hierarchy so that we can actually animate these. So if you go into the window section just a bit, depth. Um, so the window is going to have the interactive object script. The animation is the box colliders, right? That's all. And on the left and right pivots, uh, they're going to be like positioned somewhere like this. And we're going to, those are going to be empty game objects. And we're going to use those as the pivot for the actual window panels, which are going to be underneath that game object. So let's lift this um, left window panel and right window panel. Those are going to be underneath the pivot game objects. Um, that way we can 
rotate the pivots and then and then the panel would rotate according to that right and finally these are the, uh, the panels these are the actual um, visualizing objects like these are the actual mesh renderers uh, that we're going to see just 3d cubes um, and they don't do anything else apart from just displaying like a mesh okay so let's keep this open and then start assigning the uh, creating the game object so let's create the window first game object create empty I'm just gonna call this window let's actually make a bit of room as well like this okay so the window is gonna probably gonna be like this so like that okay so this is the window which corresponds to that so let's create these two now so select the window go to game object create empty child um, and you can just call it left pivot as you can see it's um, position zero 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 okay uh, and let's before creating the right pivot let's create the left window panel for this one so select this and then actually you don't need to select that but just um, game object 3d object cube and make it shut the child of left pivot might as well set the positions to zero and then scale it up a bit to be like a size of the window panel something like this okay so bear in mind that we need the pivot to be on one of the sides of the the panel let's call this panel so the way that we do it is just move it slightly so it should be on the very edge of the panel somewhere like that okay doesn't have to be exact Somewhere like that. Right now, as you can see, when we move the uh, sorry, when we rotate the pivot, it animates. Cool. But if we didn't move it, I guess you know what's going on, right? So if you don't move it, like so, when you animate the pivot looks like that same problem that we had with the door okay so if you want to actually do it like precisely uh, make the exposition half of the scale of the object um, the cube that way it's uh, exactly gonna be correct position uh, in terms of the pivot okay let's do the same thing for the right one so that we can easily do that by just duplicating this right click duplicate rename this to be right pivot okay and then what we can do is um, selecting the right pivot we can invert the x to be minus that way it's going to be like that then everything's going to be inverted Okay, that way that's like an easier way of creating um, the inverse of the left one but as you can see it's positioned incorrectly it needs to be the other way so this one needs to be there and that one needs to be there right so it's actually gonna be the left pivot is gonna be minus 4 and the right pivot is gonna be plus 4 Right? That way, when we do the animations, it's going to be fine. Cool. Now let's create the animations. So select the window object. Oh, before that, um, select the, both the panels and then delete the box collider. And then now select the window object and add the interactive object 
script onto it. As you can see, it adds the box collider and the animation component onto it. Now let's go into the uh, animations tab and then create a um, animation. If for some reason it doesn't let you create an animation from, from the animations tab like this, um, you may want to add a animator component onto the game object and then it would let you create um, this. Um, you don't need the animator component for later use. You can just add it and then delete it. Uh, just so it lets you create the uh, animations. But if you don't like doing that, uh, there's another way of doing the uh, animations, creating the animations, sorry. Uh, that is, go into the folder that you want to create the animations in. For, for ours, it's um, animations folder. Right click, create, and animation. I'm going to call this win open, like so. And not like that, actually. Win open, like so. And then you can go into the uh, animator component and make this make the size two, and then just assign it manually. And now when you select it, it's gonna show up there. Okay. So let's add the um, the other animation as well. Let's uh, duplicate this by pressing Control D or Command D on Mac, or you can go to Edit and Duplicate. And let me just say when close and then add that as a second animation okay so now when you select the window object you're gonna have both of these here so let's animate that uh, we only need to animate the rotation of left pivot and right pivot so add property um, let's do the left one first left transform rotation right it uh, animates all three but we only need actually the, uh, the one of them y so left pivot needs to be somewhere let's say yes yeah, 75 okay minus 75 open go cool. and then for close let's do the same thing left transform rotate and then from minus 75 to zero okay so let's do the same thing for the we know uh, wind close um, right pivot as well so I should have done this on the other animation as well so right pivot transform rotate let's make the plus Click the plus, sorry, and then add 75 to this one. And we can go into win open, and do the same thing for right pivots rotation. So, in here it starts with minus 75, so the right pivot needs to be 75. There you go. So, both animations now looking good. Okay, now hopefully this should be it. Um, one other thing, the window, um, windows uh, box collider need to be, it's actually small, like, like so, it needs to encompass the whole um, panel, like the boot, boot panels. So let's make it a bit bigger, like that. And let's try to run. And when you click, nothing happens. Okay. So then you're going to get a bunch of warnings and errors. So the problem is, um, we're trying to get the animation clips, like win open and win close. But since uh, Unity 5 has a new animator component and all that new APIs with regards to the animations window, we need to mark these as legacy animations. So the way that we do this is, it actually says that in in the in the warning component window mar must be marked as legacy right so the way that we do it is um, select the animation and then go into this guy right here the small um, that one and then select the normal I'm sorry a uh, debug the normal one is the normal one 
um, you want the debug and then select legacy I do that for both animations or all the animations as you can see these ones are I've created on unity 4 and it's already marked as um, legacy but the new ones that I created in unity 5 it's not created as legacy animations so you need to explicitly say that I can put this back to normal okay now there you go um, uh, all right i'm um, just taking out play automatically something wrong with the animations oh it's the other way around well, the close is fine the uh, the open animation is not correct so let's just change that so it needs to be from zero these are like this is another way of animating it so you go to the keyframe that you want to animate the property or the value just set it to whatever you want so this one's going to be minus 75 and this one's going to be 75 like so so the open animation happens like that okay okay there you go cool hope you guys guys um enjoyed the tutorial and um, have a good day